morning, everyone. Would you stand with me this morning? Thank you for choosing to be with us today. Would you put your hands together and just give the kids, let the kid children here feel welcome. Thank you so much. You know, I was, one of the passages I was reading this morning, it was in Psalms 9 to 5, and it encouraged us, us to come before the Lord with singing. It said, oh, come before the Lord with singing. Come before the Lord with thanksgiving, because he is the rock of our salvation. Is he the rock of your salvation? Yes, he is. He is the rock of our salvation. Would you lift your hands with me as I pray? Our Father, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise your name. We thank you, O God, that you inhabit our praise. And I thank you, O God, that we can come bold to the throne of grace this morning, lifting our hands in adoration to who you are. So we commit our body, we commit our soul, we commit our spirit unto you today. Be glorified in us and through us. As we worship you today, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put those hands together today.
morning. Is that all right? Sing, I was lost. I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash I was born again. Forever free in the Savior's hands. You were more than my words could say. I'll follow you, go through all my days. Fix my eyes, follow in your ways. Forever free in unending grace. Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love never ending. Oh, oh, oh. Your love, you are a around 
Surrounding me, let it breathe at your name. Call these bones to live, call these lungs to see once again. I will praise Breathe. Call these bones to live, call these lungs to see once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. You make the dark. in your mighty name today, Jesus. No other name but yours, Jesus. But we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Fear is silenced at the name of Jesus. All fear is removed in your presence, Lord. But we thank you that you're here. We welcome you here, Jesus. Come and have face come 
Jesus changes everything this morning. Amen? Whether it's fear, whether there's chains, whether there's bondage, whatever's holding us back or holding you back this morning, Jesus changes everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just pray together. Father, we thank you that you change everything. And so, Father, I pray this morning that as we have come together to worship you, Father, if we've brought change, if we've brought bondage, if we've brought something that needs to be addressed today, we've brought sin into our lives, Father, we just declare, oh God, that you change everything. And we confess your name today over our situation, over our lives. And so, Father, we thank you, oh God, that you are changing everything in my life, in our lives today. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good this morning? Hallelujah. You look so wonderful this morning. You look like you want to say hi to your neighbors. So why don't you take a couple of minutes and just greet each other and say, God bless you this morning. It is so good to see you. You look wonderful. God bless you. good. You can find your seat at this time. If the children, if you have, I um, see most of them have, dis, have gone downstairs already. If you have children, there is a junior church downstairs for them. If you'd like to take them down there and uh, check them in down there, that would be fantastic. Also in the seat back in front of you, there's our connection card. If you wouldn't mind just pulling that out right now, everybody together. You can pull that out. Look at the front side. The ushers have some extras for you and they have a pen because on the front side, we want you to fill out the, the front side. Let us know how we can best stay in contact with you, whether that's through text, which is uh, probably the preferable number. Leave us a mobile number or an email address. And also on the reverse side, some opportunities for next steps you're interested in and an opportunity for you to share your praise reports and your prayer requests with us. Also, social media, if you wouldn't mind checking in this morning on social media. Let people know where you are, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or whatever. Share us, um, add us to your stories, mention us in your, in your post, and use the hashtag BCF Prep. Thank you so much. God bless you. And let me invite Dr. Harrison and Pastor Kathleen for Family Focus at this time. Amen. Well, it's always a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? All right. 
Uh, we want to take you right into family focus today. And we want to talk to you about um, a, pool, a coping pool. Uh, and you're probably wondering what is this coping pool. But as the summer is, uh, has been coming to us, a lot of us like pools, right? You don't like pools? Come on. When it's really hot out there, you just want to dive into the pool and refresh yourself and rejuvenate and just cool down and, and, and you know, get yourself all ready again to continue the summer. Well, you know, one of the things we were, we were talking about, the fact that all of us, from the time we were, can remember when we were told by our parents, teachers, friends, family members, things that we did not really like to hear, we create a pool in our mind, a positive pool and a negative pool. And this pool is what I call coping pool. This is what, how we have learned to survive and strive. And sometimes these pools, we kind of protect it in ourselves. And it's a way of how we learn to cope. Sometimes we may cope by reading a book or maybe going for a walk or probably we may do some exercising. But then there are negative coping skills that we develop. Sometimes we use alcohol and drugs and, and other means that is not good for us. However, when we are married or we're in a relationship, I realize that in order for us to strive in a positive way, we need to join our pools together, and that's where the challenge comes, where husbands and wives need to create a pool that they can work together because this pool is what's going to help you survive in the future. And a lot of times when we are dealing with negative things in life, we go back to our childhood or we go back into that pool that we created from a young age, and sometimes that's not a healthy way of dealing with situations. That's right. And, you know, uh, I think the challenge is in marriage is just trying to combine that because some of the pools that we create are healthy for us. It's healthy for us to have individual time to cope. But the hardest thing is trying to find something together to be able, because you can cope on your own, but you're not going to solve the problem if you're not creating a coping pool together. Yeah, I like, like planting gardens. I like writing books. I don't like planting gardens, and I really don't like writing books. <laughs> So that's not something, that's a coping strategy for you. But pools that we do together, right, is We different. communicate very well. <laughs> we learn to iron out any issues that stands in the way. That's right. When there's a lot of stress, we go on a little date, like this weekend. <laughs> Paid $133 to spend the night with Kathleen. That was very good. <laughs> it's that's worth, a good pool. It's a, it's good, a good pool. pool. It's yeah, worth it. I like that pool. So guys, $133. A good, good investment. A good investment. Let's investment. get some tips for today. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be very expensive if we use that coping pool every time. But tips to remember. Number one, relationship is always about us, we, and ours. Something that you need to consider. Number two, whatever we do affects each other. So decisions should not hurt but complement one another. So that's something that we really need to work on is finding decisions that complement and do not hurt each other but work well with each other. So relationship is not about me, myself, and I? That's right. It's we, ourselves, and ours. Okay. Just check in there. <laughs> okay. I got, almost got it. Number three, coping pools should give positive, refreshing feeling with a long-lasting positive stimulant. So a coping pool is something that should be positive for you as a couple working together. And, uh, you know, sometimes the pool will be a little shallow. You just need to refill it a little bit, but it's something that you can use to work together. Amen. Amen. So let's welcome Pastor Andy and Pastor Jill as they come. Let's give them a warm welcome. Thank you, thank you. It's not a swimming pool we're making out there, by the way. <laughs> I want to read you a scripture. It says in Proverbs 31, talking about the virtuous woman, that her price is far above rubies. Not $133. Far above rubies. Isn't that true? <laughs> We're going to pray for some folks uh, right now, actually. Uh, if it's your birthday or anniversary during the month of July, would you stand up on your feet, please? Oh. We have lots of birthdays and anniversaries. Woo good, 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 yeah. Yes, Pastor Jay did get one day older. 
this month, each day. <laughs> we want to stretch our hands out towards these ones and, and bless you. Jill, why don't you lead us in prayer? Thank you. Father, we just thank you and praise you that you've given us life. Thank you, Father. And that you've given us enough, these standing, you've given another year to live for you. So, Father, let the passion of your life rise up inside of them. Let them honor you with every day that you have given them. Let them bring glory unto your name. Father, for the marriages, we pray that you will bless them, that as they keep that covenant with each other and with you, that your presence will rest upon them and your blessing will go with them wherever they are, whatever they do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. Also keep praying for those that uh, have lost loved ones. A number over this last couple months have been in that situation, and then there's some in hospital still, so want to pray, Pastor Reed's brothers back in hospital again, and others as well, uh, Julius Jones is there, dad. Joan's dad and others are there, so we want to continue to believe for them, to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might, to be able to receive all that God has for them. I do want to remind you, though, that um, to, uh, 11 o'clock, we have a, a special service with uh, Brother Ted Shuttlesworth will be here at 11 o'clock today. You don't have to stay. It's all right. You can if you want, but he's going to be back on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night at 7 o'clock. And so as often as you can make it to that, please do. Bring friends along with you. Tell friends. Uh, we don't often try to pull people from other churches. That's not our goal. But there are people in other churches that really need to receive from God in a very special way. And Brother Ted carries a strong anointing on him for healing as well as for a prophetic word. And so there may be friends that you have that go to other churches that could be interested in coming with you throughout the week. Then it doesn't interfere with what they do on Sunday. But we haven't advertised our Sunday meeting or anything like that because we don't want to pull people from other places. Hallelujah. You're ready to preach, are you? Well, where's Victor? Victor, stand up. Victor here, Victor here is... Uh, Bible school student heading back for his last year in Portland, and uh, this is his last Sunday with us. Next week, he's out into the States visiting some family, so we just bless you, my friend. We thank you for being here over the summer, and we look forward to you coming back after your schooling and being able to add great value here in the future. Do you believe, that? Do you believe for that? All right. Bless you, my friend. Thank you so much. Exciting. Pastor Lena, Pastor Lena, stand up, please, from Dominica. Praise the Lord. We love you. Keep doing a good work. Brother Rudy and Anne are going to be heading down there in November and ministering down there and helping out with many people as well. So part of what we do is we reach beyond our walls. Is that right? It's not all about us. Say that out loud not all about us, and so when we receive and when we give to God our, our offering, it's not all about us. It's not to do this that we're doing inside the room here to, to pay for this building. It's about to care for the things that are our responsibility, but also to reach out far beyond our walls and impact people's lives all around the world. One of the men that we work with in India by the name of Israel He's in Calcutta area and leads a whole part of that, that nation uh, under Pastor David Prakasa. Was up in Bihar this week, and uh, him and four others got attacked by some very radical people, beat them up quite severely, and now they're recovering and still going, planning to go back up there again. So there are places around the world that we invest in financially that need outside help to lift them up to strengthen them, and to advance the cause of the kingdom in their area. So I want to encourage you to pray. When we give, and we're going to give you an opportunity here in a moment, but when we give, we're not just giving finances. We're giving our faith, and it's represented through dollars and cents, but it's also our faith for God to be working all around the world. Is that true? Do you believe for that? So in the seat back in front of you, there's an tithe an offering envelope like that, please pull it out, and uh, don't just look at it, but put your name in there, and your address, and our ushers have some pens if you need one, or offering envelope if you need one, but I want to encourage each one of us, let's 
push back the enemy's territory even through our giving. Do it with purpose. Do it with intentionality so we know what we're doing. Whether you're a young person, or whether you're one that has a family around you, or whether you're in your retirement years, every one of us have the same opportunity to please God. Is that true? He doesn't just say it's a certain group of people. Every one of us can bring in a tenth of what we've earned. We can add to that and advance the kingdom of God forcefully in our area. And as we do that, God's blessing overtakes us. And I'm excited about that part too. So I'm going to give you just a moment to finish your preparation. If you want to write a check, just use the initials BCF. If not, our debit machines will be open afterwards. We do accept cash. And there's text to give that you can prepare for. Thank you. to your name. Yeah, absolutely. Before we pray, I just want to thank all of the summer staff that have been here doing camps for three weeks in a row. Why don't you all stand up? Anyone that's there? Come, Katrina as well, stand up. Come on, we want to see you. Stand on your feet to all the ones, the summer staff members, please, that have been Some here helping us. Just doing a great job. Praise God. Thank you so much. Let's lift our offering to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to invest in your work. You trust us. You put money in our hands. You allow us to work to receive it. And then, Lord, you trust us that we would bring that tenth back, a portion back to you, and present it to you willingly, voluntarily, with no compulsion by others. But because we love you and want to demonstrate our love to you and our commitment to your cause, to bring people into the kingdom of God, to change their lives and make them like Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you for that privilege today. We ask that you'd multiply every dollar given. Let it accomplish much more than the, would be indicated by the value. And then, Lord, bless your people that give as well. We thank you for the privilege of doing that. And, Lord, if there's one, one or two that just don't have any money, that you would put some in their hands that they'd be able to bring a portion back. And Lord, if you have some here that just choose not to give, I pray, Lord, that you would help them to see all the benefits that you shower upon them because you love them and how they can add value to others too. Thank you, Father. Amen. Ushers, please serve us. Thank you. Probably be done early. Well, you probably can see that over the last few weeks, the platform had games up here, but today there is none. So the games are over. There are no prizes today. But you get to have the best prize, and that's the power of God in your life, that Jesus be alive in your life.
But over the last few weeks, we've looked at different games people have played. The first week, if you were here, we did win, lose, or draw. And we learned that many times in our life, things are seldom as they appear. We start out and we think things are going to be one way and we find out they're another. But we learned that God has more with us than against us. So we can win in whatever area of life we're at. Week two, we looked at family feud. We looked at the life of Joseph and how many times in families problems rise up. And even though Joseph appeared to be in a bad place in life, at the end, when his brothers came, in Genesis 37, it said, Joseph spoke to his brothers, and he said to them, God set me here to prepare to save your life. Joseph didn't get at his brothers for what they did to him, but he saw the goodness of God in his life. And he saw God had a plan for his life that was greater than himself, that went beyond him to many others. In week three, we looked at last week. What's the, remember the, the blank there we had to fill in? How words express. Words express what we believe. Words express where we're going to go, because what we believe and speak will determine our future. You know, I heard that a car company, maybe you've heard of it, it's called Mercedes. They say their cars don't break down. They just sometimes fail to proceed. You see, words express something. They don't want people thinking that their cars aren't going to be good. They want people to think their car is the best. I heard that um, funeral homes, cemeteries, don't call, like to be called that anymore. They want to be pre-arrangement centers. You see, people don't want the reality of life to face them. They want to paint a false picture. Words will express what you truly believe. Words will fuel what's inside of you. We want to fuel the passion of God inside of us. We want to use the words that will allow God to rise up in us and allow his presence to move us. If you have your Bible, there's a verse in Isaiah 35, 4. It says, say to those with fearful hearts, be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution, and he will come to save you. God has a good plan for your life. He has a plan with a future and a hope. But we look at the things around us and we let them determine what we're going to do. We let them determine the path we will walk on. We let them determine how we're going to move instead of being determined by what God's word has already spoken to us. So if you have your Bible, you can turn to Judges chapter 6. And we're going to look at the life of a man that had one determination in life, but God came by his power and turned that man's life around the same way he wants to come and fuel us by his passion to set us on the path he has for us so we will accomplish what he has for us. I tell you, when pastor tells me about some of these pastors in other countries and what they're doing for Jesus, it shakes me at my core because sometimes we think we're doing so much and we're, we're, we're just doing so many things. But they are risking their very lives for the gospel of Jesus. They are fueled by the passion of God in such a way that they are not deterred by what they feel. 
They are not deterred by how their emotions are wanting to respond. But they are deterred by what the Word of God has said and what it has done in their life. That I would be like that. That I would learn to obey God's Word. To be determined. It's on your connection card. That I would be determined to obey God's Word. That I would be determined to say... Stop the passion killers from taking away God's life in me. And that I would speak life to others around me. Instead of seeing the negative things, that I would continue to speak life into them. You know, I've learned in life that unexpected opportunities often are moments of greatness to determine my future. Sometimes unexpected opportunities come and God brings them to turn us that we would make that step into our future. But many times I don't take them. Many times I have too many questions. But in Judges 6, we see a man that was in the same situation. The dictionary says that passion is an intense desire. Where are your intense desires? When you are fueled by the passion of God, no is never the answer. No is never right. Because all things are possible in him. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what someone's saying. It doesn't matter what the road ahead is. All things are possible in him. And if he is destined for us, he will make a way for us. And you know, when passion starts to rise, I've learned that that's where a creative ability starts to flow. You think of things you've never thought of. You do things you've never done before. It's amazing. And you know, the other thing that happens when God's passion is alive in us, life isn't boring. It's not about what I have to do, but it's about I get to do it. It's about I get to be a part of this great plan God has. I get to be a part of the adventure God has slated for my life. It's so wonderful. So did you find Judges 6 yet? Here in Judges 6, Gideon is called upon to serve the people of Israel. But in verse 1, it starts, the people of Israel had done what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord gave them into the hand of the Midianites. See, Israel was God's people. God had rescued them. He had saved them and taken, heard their prayer. He had taken them out of Egypt. He had taken them along the way. He had fought the enemies on their behalf. But then the Bible says they did evil in the sight of the Lord. That tells me that even though we love God, even though we serve God, that if we let passion killers into our life, we can turn from what God has for us and let other things in that will put us into the hand of the enemy. It's not God that does it. It's me that does it. You know, God is so amazing. His mercy and grace is so wonderful. Where would we be without his mercy and grace? You know, the Midianites, they weren't just taking the people. They were taking their crops. They were taking everything they have, the Bible said. And Israel was in a bad way. They had little food. They were fearful. Everything was upon them. But even in that situation, there was a man named Gideon. The Bible says he was the least of his family. He was the least in his tribe. And we find him 
hiding out, thrashing the wheat, trying to get grain for food at night, hoping the enemy wouldn't find him. As we see him here, we see that negative circumstances were surrounding him. So we have some negative, let's put it up here. We have some negative circumstances. Anybody got negative circumstances that pop up in your life? But see, that's where Gideon was at. Things were very negative around. And because of that negativity, because of that things around, Gideon felt like a failure. He felt like he couldn't measure up. Sometimes when negative circumstances come to our life, we feel like we're failing. We feel like we're, we can't accomplish what God has for us. You know, that's okay for Pastor Jay. He can do it. But we can't. We're failing. And so we put a wall in front of us. But you know, whenever failure and negative circumstances come, fear is always standing by. And fear will always try to control. When fear moves into our life, we will always try to control what's around us. So we can measure ourselves. And we can know that if we are trying to control things, there is a fear in our life. Gideon was fearful. The Bible says he was hiding out. But you know, the good news is, even though Gideon was hiding, even though he felt a failure, even though those negative circumstances were around him, God knew where he was. God sent an angel to speak to Gideon. And that angel said to Gideon, you're a mighty man. Now think about it. Gideon's hiding out. He's trying to control everything around him. The circumstances don't look good. That's, that, that was true. But the angel called him a mighty man. You see, God doesn't see you the way you see yourself. God doesn't see your circumstances the way they are. God sees you as mighty. God sees you as able. God sees you as his, that he can move ahead if you will put yourselves in his hands. Many times when fearful things come into our life, we have unmet expectations expectations that we have thought were going to be. But all of a sudden, they become unmet. Gideon didn't think he was going to be hiding out trying to get food. He never expected the angel of God to come and speak to him. And then when he did, he could see all the things that were wrong. He's telling the angel, the Bible says, I'm the least of the least. I have no training. I'm not strong. I don't know what to do. Why are you talking to me? But you see, God always knows what he's put inside you. God always knows what you're capable of. If we will listen to him. And then as life continues on, as we let these things build, strife always moves in. Because as we get fearful, as we're trying to hold on to things, strife will always come. Because we are trying to control and hold on, and others won't agree. And because we don't want to hear what God is saying, we push back. And when we push back, the natural emotions start to rise. And whenever you let your natural emotion rise, you will say things you shouldn't say. You will do things you shouldn't do. And you know, when you're going along, weariness comes because you get tired 
of the fight. You get tired of trying to hold on. You get tired of what's happening around. And if you let that weariness say, oppression will take over. And you will find it hard to get out of bed. And you will find it hard to deal with people. And you will build a wall in front of yourself. And if you continue on this road, hopelessness comes. It's like there's nothing left. And the wall gets stronger. And the wall separates you from what God has for you. Gideon was hiding behind the walls, the walls of his hopelessness, the walls of his fear, the walls of unaccepted, unexpected expectations that didn't happen. But when the angel of the Lord came and when Gideon started to listen to what God said, the walls started coming down. And as the walls came down, Gideon became a mighty man of valor. Gideon became the man that set the people free and walked in the plan of God. Now, God may not have for you and I to lead a mighty army. He may not have, you know, some of the things that Gideon had to step out and do. But you see, the emotions are the same. It's not about the job. It's not about the function. It's about living our life with the presence of God. Yes. It's about living our life, walking free of what God has for us into the things God has for us. He has so many things for us. You see, when we want to keep passion alive in our life, we have to believe that when God sent Jesus, Jesus purchased our life, a life of joy with no obligation to the things of this world. But you see, many of us live like we're obligated to this world. But our only obligation is to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Our only obligation is to honor and praise who he is and what he has done for us. God loved me before I loved him. When I recognized, I didn't find him. He found me. When I recognize that, that love stirs the passion in my heart. And when that passion is stirred, then I listen to what his word says. God wrote me many love letters. It's all in this book. But I have to read it to keep the passion alive. I have to know what it says for me. It's not good enough that pastor says it. I have to know it for me. I have to know what he said to me, that he will do what he said. As I believe it, as I read it, that passion rises up in my heart. The Bible says that God rejoices over me. See, our minds don't want to receive that. Because who am I? I make lots of mistakes. I don't always hear God's voice. And when I do, I don't always respond. But the Bible says he rejoices over me anyway. And as he rejoices over me and I believe it, a passion rises in my heart. And as a passion rises in my heart, I want to do things that I didn't do before. I want to help people I've never helped before. I want to find ways to carve a road to get God's presence to people. I may not be able to go to people in some countries. I may not be able to speak to them. But I can help people that can I can send people that can. I can pray for those that are going. God responds over us with joy. And God heals our hearts. 
He heals our pain. And as he heals us, it keeps the passion alive because we praise him and thank him. As we thank him, his life flows through us. You know, there's such power in thanksgiving. There's such power in thanksgiving. You know, unmet expectation says, you can't do it. You're not good enough. You'll never make it. So find another route. But God says, as we thank him and praise him, we just thank him. You know, I've been in situations where I didn't have a clue what to do. But as I started to just thank God, look, I remember being on a bus the very first time in Mumbai, India. And it was late at night, and you couldn't see too much. But as we were driving through the city, you could see shadows of people lying on the streets and things that weren't so nice. And something in my heart started to rise up. And I just sat in that bus and I started thanking God that he had brought me here and that I had something that I could share. And the lady beside me started throwing up. And I thought, it must be the long flight. And so I got her to the hotel and I got her in, in bed and put her in my room and she was sick all night, and I felt so bad for her. But in my heart, even though I was feeling bad, I was so thankful to God. And I'm getting dressed in the morning, and I'm saying, thank you, Jesus, you have us here. Thank you, Lord, we're going to do something good today. And she looked at me, and she said, what is wrong with you? I said, I don't think anything. I feel good. It's you that was sick. And she said, didn't you see what was on the street last night? It turned out she was sick because she couldn't stand looking at what she saw. And all she wanted to do was go to the airport and get on a plane and go home. You see, sometimes when God brings us out, we step out into something. God reveals what's in our heart. But you see, I'm so thankful the story didn't end there. I was able to encourage her that it was going to be okay. That this is why God brought us here. That we have something that can make a difference. And day by day, she got stronger and stronger. And when it came time to go home, she didn't want to go home. She was doing great things, and she didn't want to go home because she had never experienced what she was experiencing with God using her the way he was. Now, the thing is, you don't have to go all the way to Mumbai to do that. You can do that right on your street. You can do that right at your workplace. You can do it wherever God has you. It's so amazing when we serve God. But he is looking for us to keep the passion alive. If we had time to continue reading all through Gideon's life, we would see how God continually gave him creative ideas and helped him to lead because he let the passion rise up in him. Romans 8, 38. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you believe that, the passion will stay alive in your heart. The Message Bible says, there is no way, not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backsliding, not even the worst sinless in Scripture. They kill us in cold blood because they hate us. We're sitting ducks. They pick us off one by one. None of this phases us because of Jesus' love in us. I am absolutely convinced 
that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of Jesus and the way he made our master has embraced us. I tell you, God has made a way for you and I. But we have to get rid of the things that come. Failure. Where's fear? Fear somewhere here. Must be down there. I kicked it off. Because you know why? This is a big thing in Christian's life. Fear comes and knocks at our door over and over again. And when it knocks, we open the door. And once we open the door, we are entertaining the enemy in our lives. And he stops us from walking into the fullness of God. Many people wonder why things don't happen. When we walk in the fullness of God, it's when we see the presence of God come. It's when we see God do things in our lives. It's so amazing. You know, in 19, maybe 78, I had such a desire to serve God. I was a mom at home with kids. What could I do? So I would go clean the church. I'd go file the papers for the secretary. I'd do whatever I could do. But it was like I wanted to do more. And so I started gathering ladies and just invite them for coffee. But then once they came and I gave them coffee, I'd add the Bible to it. So then I got a little bolder, and I actually called it a Bible coffee. But see, at first, fear was there that they wouldn't come. So I just invited them for coffee. But as fear started to take a second place in my life, I added the word Bible to it, and they still came. And you know who came? Everybody but the ladies that attended my church. My neighbors came. A lady that followed Baha'i came. Ladies from other, other no religions at all, but nobody from my church. And they would say to me, what you're saying isn't true. And I'd say, yes, it is. And I'd show them in the Bible. I didn't know that in 1978, God was teaching me and preparing me for things he had ahead. That days would come where I would be doing administration and somebody would come and say, you're supposed to be at a church down the street. And everybody forgot to tell me. So I didn't know, and I would have to go, and I didn't have a week to prepare. Sometimes I would have a 20-minute cab ride to prepare. But you see, in 1978, when I started teaching those ladies in my living room, God started preparing my heart. He started putting things inside me. So when the time came for more, it was already there. Sometimes we're waiting for the big thing. We're waiting for this to happen. We're waiting for that to happen. But if we will just step out and take those little steps and take another step and take another step, fear gets knocked out of our lives and we will be bold for Jesus, but not in a brash way, not in a foolish way, not in a presumptuous way, but in a way where the power of God will move on our behalf. And ladies that met in my living room that knew nothing about the Bible but that thought they did, ladies that followed after other gods, not before long, started accepting Jesus as their personal Savior, and half of them got filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues like the Bible says. They never came to my church, but they took what they had back to their church and started sharing in their church. You see, when the passion of God is alive inside of us, we take what we have and we share it wherever we are.
And when we share it wherever we are, the power of God moves on our behalf. And when the power of God moves on our behalf, change comes. Situations turn around. Things that we couldn't change start to change. Things we couldn't move start to move. And I tell you, Gideon found that God was true on his behalf. And when God said, you are a mighty man of valor, God didn't just say that to Gideon. He is saying that to you today. He has called you to be a mighty man of valor. He has called you to rise up right where you are and do what you can do for the kingdom of God. For we are living in a day. The harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe. God is looking for you and I. He is looking for us to bring his life to those that don't know it. I had a lady with me. She was from the Alliance Church in Toronto. And she came to, where did she come to? Baroda, Gujarat, state of Gujarat. And uh, we had had a few, few little hard times. And I had arranged for the team to go very near the hotel to this slum and just go share God's life the best they could. And when they got to the gate of the slum, there was a man there, and they thought that he was the pastor that I had arranged to meet them. And he said, I've been waiting for you. Follow me. So they followed him, and they took him. He took them to a little sh sh shack, and this lady was lying on the floor on a mat, paralyzed. And he said, pray. Well, in this group of people, there were a couple pastors and a couple other, you know, a few, a few different people, different ages. And the pastors were talking and discussing together who was going to read the scripture and who was going to pray. And as they were discussing, this little alliance lady, who wasn't sure she believed everything we believed, she came on the trip to see if what we said was true. She walked up, and she bent down. Nobody even noticed her doing it because they were all busy chatting. She bent down, and she put her hand on the lady's forehead, and she said, Jesus, touch this lady. And in a couple of minutes, the lady rose up. And the pastors were in shock because they hadn't decided what scripture yet. <laughs> this is a true story. When the lady came back to the hotel, she, she said to me, can I receive the Holy Spirit? I said, do you want it? She said, yes. And the prayer coordinator and I took her to our room and we prayed with her and she received the baptism in the Holy Spirit in spoken tongues. She believed that the power of God was real. I tell you, God is amazing. He's, he's not looking just for the evangelists. I would... We bless God for the gifts. And Pastor Ted's going to be here in the 11 a.m. service. And we have seen him move in so many miraculous ways over the years. God is with him. But it's not just for him. It's for each and every one of us. But it's only as we keep the passion of God alive in our hearts. As we believe what the Bible says. As we allow his word. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor any other angels, nor principalities or powers, nor any other thing present or to come, will separate me from the love of God. That means when you go to work tomorrow and your workmate is rubbing you the wrong way, nothing can separate you from the love of God. That means you don't respond the way they respond. You respond with the love of God. You respond with his life. You bring his life into the situation. We had, uh, let me tell you one more story. Our, our uh, grade one teacher, when we were in Alberta, we had a Christian school, and our grade one teacher had a little boy in her class, and um, he came from, uh, anyway, um, he thought he was Ninja Turtle. And that meant that at any moment, he would just stand up and he would run for the wall because he literally thought he was going to climb the wall. 
And he thought if he did it enough, he would actually climb the wall. And she had great trouble controlling this child. No matter what she did, it wasn't working. She started to put that child on a chair. And she would lay her hands on him. And she would pray in tongues. And then she scheduled it. So every so often, she would do it. And she started to see longer and longer periods of where peace would come over that child. And he would not go for the wall for longer and longer. And it wasn't too long before he didn't go at all. And then the next year, they came up to my office and they said, would you come downstairs? We need you for a minute. So I went to the school and they took me to this classroom. And this little boy was in the classroom. And my first thought was, what has he done? And he said to me, would you sit down? Now, this is a grade one -er. I sit down on the chair. And he looks at me and he says, do you know Jesus? <laughs> you need Jesus in your life. Do you have a good church? Come to this church and you'll find Jesus. And then he looked at me and he said, I'm done today, thank you. And he walked out. See, what I'm telling you is the power of God is available to us for whatever situation we were in. If we will avail ourselves to let the passion of God rise up, to let his life, as Gideon hid, thought he was the least of the least, thought he was a failure, thought he could never measure up. But as the angel of God came to him, and as he put off those things, and he received the coat of heaven that said, you are a mighty man of valor, he was able to let go of everything. So today, why don't you stand up? And we're just going to worship God a little bit. And I don't know where you're at. I don't know what the things are that are holding you back. I don't know where the things are burning away and killing the passion of God in your life. But I know as we worship God, if you will release them, the power of God will come. While Jill was speaking this morning, I got a text from um, Dolores Reed. It sits right there in Larry. And Larry uh, had a medical episode and is on his way to Trillium Hospital right now. So I want us to pray, and then we're going to worship God for what he is at work doing. If you want to slip out of your seat and come down front, that's quite all right. We give you liberty to do that. And then I'll come up and we'll close off the service appropriately. But let's just pray now. Father, we thank you. Jesus. For those who love you, yes, Jesus. we thank you, Lord, for your Jesus. intervention in people's Jesus. lives, whether they Jesus. know you or not. But right now, we turn our attention to Larry, yes, and we Lord. pray for him now in the yes, mighty name Jesus. of Jesus. We declare yes, your healing in his yes, body Lord. even now. While we're here together, joining our faith, you said of two or three, there's many more than us, so we boldly declare by your stripes he's healed. We call down that the fire of God upon him even now in that hospital in Trillium, and we just proclaim your will over his life in Jesus' name. We bind the enemy's strategies over him and say, no, you shall not succeed, hallelujah, but God's will shall be done in his life. In Jesus' name, we join our faith together. And now, Lord, we want to worship you. Let's worship him. Thank you, Father. We worship you. In our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Moving in this place. Moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, you are the way. Way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, you are the way, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. 
the darkness that is who you are. Sing, you are here, you are here, turning lives around, turning lives around. Oh, I worship you. Oh, I worship you. Oh, you. you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop sing it again even when even when i don't see it sure even when i don't feel it when i don't feel it, you never stop working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop. even when i don't see even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop even when I don't, and even when I don't see it, you work it. And even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you work it. And even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never sing it one time.
worship him in your own way today. In the lifting of your hands, the shout of your voice, whatever it is, Jesus, we honor you in this place, Lord. We know that you're working, even when we don't see it, when we don't feel it, Lord. We trust in you, Jesus. Oh, we trust in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we trust in you. Oh, we trust in you, Lord. We trust in you, Lord. Sing, give it, let not don't see it. When I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Even when I don't see, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just look up at me for just a moment, please. Just look up at me for just a moment. I, I want to get your attention for just a moment. Our words are important. Gideon saw himself, said he was the least of the least. God said he was a mighty overcomer, a man of valor. When Gideon started to agree with what God said, it released the power of God to work through him, in him, and around him. When we come like this on a Sunday, some, many, many are accustomed to singing and declaring these things. Others are like statues. In your heart, you're saying things, but with your lips, you're not. Can I please encourage you as your pastor to say it out loud? When we sing these things, you don't have to worry about people around you. you don't worry about embarrassing yourself. But as we declare with our own lips the message of God, it releases His power in us to work even greater than He has in the past. We want the best for everyone. That's why we do what we do. Can you give me that box, please? All this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're going to be here. And so I encourage as many as you can to come. And then next week... So We'll be here Sunday, but next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, our youth are going to be at their camp. And we're believing for the power of God to be powerfully released upon them that lives will be turned around, impacted for eternity. And so what we did is we got some chocolates for them to sell. And many know that, that, that they're not as great a salesman as, as adults are. And so we have some of these boxes out in the foyer there that if you want to take them to work with you or take them in your neighborhood or just pick them up and buy them, then it's going to subsidize for some of those younger ones coming to enable them to be able to receive more from God. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah, I, I see it's a good idea for somebody else, but not you. So, so I just want to encourage you. Let's see how we can invest in others. All right? Connection cards. Deposit it on the way out at the doors. If you're here for the very first time today, we welcome you. Uh, bring your connection card to the back end of the entrance of the foyer because there we have a gift for you. We want to give that to you. We welcome pastors that are here as well and trust that you'll be able to come out during the week with us. We're going to go out of this place singing the songs that we sang. Why? so that you carry it inside your heart all week long. Whether we see it or not, God is working. Whether we feel it or not, God is working. We walk by faith, not by sight. So it doesn't matter what we feel. It doesn't matter about those things. We just move ahead in God. So let's, Father, bless your people. 
Lord, as we leave this place, we go with your presence with us strongly. We go with the message of God on our heart that passion will continue to push back the enemy's strategies over our lives. We will cooperate with you in all things this week. So keep each one safe, healthy, and in the center of your will, we pray in Jesus' name. Now let's sing. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop.